This is an easy one. Y'all just follow along and sing with us. move into a time of prayer. Holy One, we ask that you be with us. We pray that you are there and helping us with all of our anxieties, that we're able to cast them to you. We pray for our nation, for so much turmoil that is going on. We are thankful that you, though, are the ones that reigns over our lives. We pray for many as we approach the school year, for the teachers, for the administrators, and for the students. We know that it is hard, and those decisions are difficult, but we know that you are there in the midst. And so we pray for the parents as they make those hard decisions, and we pray for the students that will go and those that will stay home. We know that we need the education. We know that we need parents that need the jobs. And so we know so much about these situations are difficult. We pray for those that are suffering from illness. We pray that you will be with their doctors. We pray that you are with their families. And we ask that you continue to heal them. Lord, we just ask for so much guidance in our lives, for the way that we're able to turn to our faith and be filled by you. Lord, we need courage. We need the courage to be able to be the voices and to share in love that is rooted in you. Be with us this morning as we pray. And be with us as we pray this prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
like the one who loves us, each and every one we serve until all are fair. <laughs> reading comes from Luke 19, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner? But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give my half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Now, we are ending up our sitcom theology with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which has been one of my favorite shows in the past. 
And if you don't know the show, it's about a family who lives in Bel Air and they're well off. And their cousin comes to live with him because his neighborhood isn't so safe anymore and his mother wants to, him to be safe and have a better life. Now, this is a, isn't unheard of. My, uh, my own grandmother did that for all my cousins to get them out of the city and to uh, help them have a better education. So the episode I chose was about an election. It was episode uh, 310. And I don't know if you guys remember that little character who played George Jefferson, but he was a guest star on this th that episode. And he was a judge trying to reclaim a seat and steal the seat from Will's uncle, Phil. Well, Phil had all the money he needed to run any kind of election he wanted. But Phil wanted to stick to the honorable thing. He wanted to help those in need. He wanted to use his time to focus on the real issues, rather than sling accusations or trash talk his opponent, which is what the other character did to Phil, even though none of this stuff was true, he was still exploiting the media with all the money that he could use. Well, needless to say, unfortunately, Uncle Phil lost the election. And people believed the dishonest things that were said about him. But it did not deter him from going to see the little man judge um, because he wanted to do the honorable thing to show his children and his nephew what the right thing there was to do. Well, in the midst of it, things got a little hairy and Will ended up getting very angry and told the man what he thought of him and how he wasn't an honest man and how he cheated people and how he just wasn't a good man. And in the midst of this, the man fell and he died. Now, he didn't have the opportunity like Zacchaeus did but I think Zacchaeus was ready because Jesus meets us where we are. Jesus met Zacchaeus up in the tree because Zacchaeus was curious about Jesus. And when Jesus said, I'm coming to your home, I wonder what went through Zacchaeus' mind. He wanted to be good. He wanted to do the right thing in front of Jesus. He wanted to be a good steward of the things that he was given. And so he said, half of what I own will go to the poor. And if I cheated anyone, I will pay back four times what I have taken. Now the contrast between these two characters <laughs> is the intervention of Christ. Zacchaeus came to change. He, he wanted to do the right thing because it was on his heart. But the other man did not have that intervention. But he was given a lot, but he didn't use it. He squandered it, he 
used it to cheat and lie and steal. He used it to dishonor his home and his wife. And so through the rest of that episode, no one had anything good to say about the character. He was seen as an awful man. And even at his funeral, nobody wanted to say any good thing about him. But I bet you by the time Zacchaeus took his last breath, people would say better things of him. So my point is, when we're given a lot, we have a lot to give. And what are we doing with the riches that we have? And I don't just mean money, I mean time and effort and energy. I mean forgiveness and grace and mercy. I mean understanding and caring towards others who don't have it. We are so blessed here at Oak Forest that we have a wonderful, wonderful food pantry. And we have other missions that we do that we do provide for others in our community. But what are we doing personally? And that's just a rhetorical question because I want you to ask yourself, how can I be helping, or am I helping enough? Or am I just doing what's expected of me? Now Zacchaeus could have said, Lord, I'll just pay back what I owe. And it could have wiped his slate clean, but he went further than that. He, he said, I'm gonna give half of what I have to the poor. And I'm going to pay back all that I've taken away from those who I've cheated four times. Because he had great wealth. He also had a lot to amend for. And so us being in this country, in our country, we do have a lot. We're known as one of the richest countries on this planet. And unfortunately, we still have people who are homeless, who are hungry, who are without medical insurance, who are struggling to make it every day. So look into your hearts and ask, Lord, how can I do more? How can I give more? How can I love more? How can I serve you more? I'm sure each one of us will get a different answer. And I'm sure we would all have an answer from God. because we're here to serve and to glorify God's name. And as we know that when we serve each other, we're serving the Lord. So when we are praying Later on, I hope that you ask God, how can I serve you, Lord? How can I be a good steward of your will? In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
table.